In our previous presentation, we understood the big omega notation. Now, in this presentation, we will understand the big theta notation. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The topic of this lecture is the big theta notation. In this lecture, we will understand the big theta notation properly. So, let's proceed and let's understand the big theta notation. So, what is the big theta notation? Here is the definition of the big theta notation. Assuming fn and gn are non-negative functions, fn is equal to theta of gn if and only if c1 into gn is less than or equal to fn and fn is less than or equal to c2 into gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c1 c2 and n naught are all constants so if fn is greater than or equal to c1 into gn and fn is also less than or equal to c2 into gn then we can say that fn is equal to theta of gn we are assuming c1 and c2 are some constants and n naught is also some constant this inequality must be true for all n greater than or equal to n naught in order to understand this definition properly let's draw the graph for c1 into gn fn and c2 into gn this is the graphical representation of these three functions c2 into gn, fn and c1 into gn. In this graph, we can observe that fn is sandwiched between c2 into gn and c1 into gn. This means fn lies between c2 into gn and c1 into gn. Because fn is greater than or equal to c1 into gn and fn is also less than or equal to c2 into gn. Clearly, c2 into gn is the upper bound of fn and c1 into gn is the lower bound of fn. And we are interested in the growth rates after n naught. Before n naught, we are not interested in the growth rates of these functions. Also, we can understand from this graph that gn is behaving as the upper bound of fn and gn is also behaving as the lower bound of fn when we multiply gn by some constants c2 and c1. So, when gn is behaving as both the upper bound and the lower bound of some function fn, then fn is equal to theta of gn. Now, you might be wondering why do we need the theta notation when we have the big O notation and the big omega notation. The big O notation tells the upper bound of an algorithm and big omega notation tells the lower bound of an algorithm. Then why do we need big theta notation? Big theta notation is used when the same function is both the upper bound and the lower bound of some other function. Like in this case, we can see that gn is both the upper bound and the lower bound of this function fn. Then fn is equal to theta of gn. So, big theta notation is used when the same function is behaving as the upper bound and the lower bound of some other function. So, I hope this is clear and this definition is also clear. Also, please note that gn is the asymptotic tight bound of fn. We know that when we say fn is big O of gn, then gn is called the asymptotic tight upper bound of fn. Or in other words, gn is the closest upper bound of fn. When we say fn is big omega of gn, then gn is called the asymptotic lower bound of fn. Or in other words, gn is called the closest lower bound of fn. We already know what is the meaning of closest upper bound and closest lower bound. 
there can be many upper bounds and many lower bounds of a function. Out of many upper bounds and lower bounds, the ones which are the closest are called the closest upper bound and closest lower bound. What about tight bound? When we say Gn is the asymptotic tight bound of Fn, what do we mean by this is that Gn is both the closest lower bound and the closest upper bound of Fn. I hope now it is clear what is the meaning of Fn equal to theta of Gn. So with this we understood the big theta notation and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.